turn me inside out and round and round upside down. Boy, you turn me inside out and round and round. I know you got charm and appeal. You always play the beat. I'm crazy to think you. You know all the words, don't you? As long as the sun continues to shine, there's a place in my heart for you that's about.
the songs tonight the songs that are most popular here in England and um, the song I'd like to do for you now is a very special song for me it's a song about having goals and dreams it's about family it's about reaching for your dreams and I want to dedicate this song to my sons Ross and Evan okay 
my family. Hold on to Don't lose your way with each passing day. You've come so far. Don't throw it away.
is also very important to me. This is our very first single from the new album, which is called Force Behind the Power. But the song, for me to you, I want to call the stars down from the sky. I want to live a day that never dies. I want to change the world only for you. All the impossible I want to do I want to hold you close Under the rain I want to kiss your smile And feel the pain I know what's beautiful Looking at you In a world of lies You are the truth What I was Show you the loneliness And what it does You walked into my life To stop my tears Everything's easy now I have you And baby Every time you touch me I become a hero I'll make film Mahogany and I love it when you sing with me if anybody feels like doing that What are you hoping for? 
No matter where you are, no matter how far, just call my name, I'll be there to hurry. On that you can depend and never worry.
I'm not a performer who looks into the darkness. I need to see your faces, and I love to see your eyes and to know if you're happy or not. So I've been watching you throughout the show, and I hope you've had a good time. I know it's But it's truly my pleasure to be here and to be with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Somebody's And the voices, would you please thank the band and the voices. I love you. Thank you very much. As Her Majesty leaves the theater, we're reminded that this is the 40th year she's graced the Entertainment Artist Benevolent Fund with her patronage. And we salute the artists who carry forward the great tradition of those who've benefited from tonight's event. And now this is Mike Carson wishing you a very good night from the 1991 Royal Variety Performance.
Uh, for me, um, I didn't have a role model. Uh, my mother was from, uh, we're from a very religious family, a gospel family. My grandfather was a minister and my mother was the baby of 12 children and they were all raised in the church. There was always singing around all the time. I guess maybe part of that became me and I guess the spiritual part of me is comes from my heritage through that. Um, music to me um, was always a healer somehow in our family and um, there was always singing and there was always music as I can remember since I was little and I think um, if there was any role models at all it was my, my parents, my mother especially and her sisters because they all sang in the church. Um, there wasn't like any movie star idols or anything like that. I think when we grew up on television there was only Amos and Andy or I don't even think Lena Horn or any of the uh, movie stars that we know of today were around then. I mean, I remember hearing about Eartha Kitt when I was about 12 years old, but um, there was no idols. There was nobody we could look up to. We had to create our own uh, idols, and usually it was our parents. To me, my mother was uh, the most magnificent woman in the world, and if I could ever even live up to my mother's standards, then I would be okay. Um, I started to sing and I lived out of the fashion magazines. I wanted to be a fashion designer when I was really young. And I worked in Detroit at a department store. I was a bus girl, you know, the girls that clean the dishes. And, and I used to be there basically because it could keep me where the store windows with all the beautiful clothing and everything else. Even though we couldn't afford it, I was there so I could see beautiful things. And then when I went to high school, I majored in fashion design and costume illustration. So I wanted to design clothes. And I went to beauty school so I could fix hair and do beautiful things with hair. And then I did makeup. So by the time I was 16, 17, and I met the Supremes, the first things I would do is we would uh, wear our hair differently and we'd wear makeup and we'd always design our costumes. And uh, I designed some of the first costumes for the Supremes. And I remember they were balloon dresses. I don't know if anybody remembers that in the 60s, the early 60s, these big balloon dresses. And um, so fashion and cosmetics and uh, hair have always been a very important part of the singing, the glamour of it all. We were living out of fashion magazines. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a lot of television. I remember when I got my first television when I was a young youngster. So um, things... Things have uh, blossomed. <laughs> Take me to that place. Higher. Everywhere 
Obrigada. Thank you so much. Thank you. Touch me in the morning. Then just walk away. We don't have tomorrow. But we had yesterday. Treat me bad. You break my heart and leave me 
what is it you remember? You can't hurry now, now you just have to wait And love don't come easy, and it's a game of give and take You can't hurry now, now you just have to wait And love don't come easy, it's a game of give and take singing now for, since the 60s and in the early days I learned what the things that are important uh, lights and sound and uh, the look of the stage the setting is very important but mostly what's important is the voice so that the people can hear the words of the song so to me the sound is more important than anything when I walk on the stage. I'm not going to worry about the gowns. I'm not going to worry about the makeup. I'm not going to worry about anything except knowing that the people can hear the words of the songs or the melody of the songs that they're used to hearing on record. So to me, when I walk on the stage, I don't want to worry about anything except knowing that they can hear that the sound is good for them. It's not too loud. It's not too soft. That the sound is perfect. So um, I, I'm a producer in a sense because I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I know that um, the theatrics of a show is very important, that people like to see lights and they like to see the glamour of it all. But to me, what's more important is the song and the words and the interpretation of the words and the interaction between me and the audience. Okay. 
kiss your smile and feel the pain. I know what's beautiful looking at you. In a world of lies, you are the truth. And baby, every time you touch me, I become a hero. I'll make you sing no matter where you are. And bring you everything you ask for. Nothing is above me. I'm shining like a candle in the dark. When you tell
Come dance with me. Come on. Thank you so much. Here's another one of my love songs. This one, a love song from me to you. It's Endless Love. Endless Love. My love, there's only you in my life. The only thing that's right. My first love. Every breath that I take, your every step I make, and I, I want to share all my love with you. No one else will do. Be the only love. 
my costume changes are really about it started um, because I can make costume changes very quickly um, I got caught in a trap really because now I can't not make a costume change and I like changing because I think the girls or the women in the audience like to see the difference in the costumes especially in America and uh, I designed them and they're very special um, because they don't make these kind of beaded costumes anymore in America uh, it's like a, a lost art they actually have to make these beads with their fingers and they bead these costumes and I think from the from the audience I'm not even sure they understand that these are hand beaded costumes and uh, each one of them are is, is an original there's only one of those kind and uh, I've had them designed in Los Angeles and I don't know how long I will be able to continue to have them so I love to change my clothes all the time I think the audience likes it and I like it too <laughs> I couldn't wear one gown for an hour and a half <laughs> too long <laughs> so that's really about the costumes and I, I designed them I've designed clothes since I and since the 60s Making movies and motion pictures is the most challenging part of my career. I've had some wonderful opportunities. I've gotten a chance to do quite a few, um, well not many, but quite a few films. And in Lady Day, I got a chance to sing a kind of music that was really different for me. Singing jazz and blues. So I'd like to do just a bit of the songs from Lady Sings the Blues where you give a taste of the film, okay? It's called I Cried For You. Let you meet some of the band, too, okay? I cried for you What a fool I used to be Every road has a turning That's one thing I'm learning I cried for you what a fool I used to be Now I found you as A little bit blue I found a little bit true I cried for you It's your turn to cry on me We're gonna start with Mark on keyboards in the front Mark
But I do know that in my life, I need to have a purpose every day. When I work up, I li wake up, I like to have something to do. I like to have a plan. And um, I, I don't always, I can't always accomplish it. I, I'm not always as I would like to be. But this is, I, I know that I like to stay busy and I like to get something completed. I, I don't like to waste my life or to waste any time. Um, I think uh, I stay busy because it keeps me uh, vital, it keeps me alive, and I think it keeps me young, too. Um, when I'm at home, mostly what I do is, is my life is consumed by my children. I have five kids. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> 
a lot of kids. And I have five babies, which I birthed myself. And I didn't have cesareans or anything. I, I just, I really birthed my children myself. I nursed them. Uh, each, uh, each of them, I nursed them at least six to months to a year. And um, the most rewarding time of my life was to be pregnant. <laughs> it's just weird, <laughs> but it's true. It is the most wonderful time to have children. And I always wanted to have children. I remember when I was with the Supremes, we kept trying to figure out who was going to have the, be the one to have the first baby. I'm up in the morning at 6 in the morning. Uh, my kids are up at 7. I get them ready for school. We're out the door at 8 o'clock. I take my kids to school by 8.30. I'm in the office by 9. 9 o'clock till about 2.30, I'm doing my office business, whether it's touring or planning new tours or concerts or settings or costumes or whatever it is, or any new business, I'm working on that until about 2.30. 2.30, I leave in the car to pick them up at 3 o'clock from school. We come home. We have a snack. Uh, I'm with my kids until they go to bed with homework. I'm mommy. Uh, they have homework after school. They're in bed by 8, 8.30. We watch uh, a television together. Uh, we read a book, and they're uh, off to bed at sleep. I'm in bed maybe 9, 9.30. I'm not very social. I don't go out a lot. On the weekends, we go to the country, and I spend time with my kids. We play soccer. We go swimming. Uh, we take long walks with the dogs, and uh, I'm an ordinary person. I drive to the market. I go and I shop for lunches for school, and uh, I'm just really fairly ordinary when I'm at home. I spend a lot of time on the telephone talking to my other children, my older children, who uh, one lives in Washington. One, you know, I just spend time with them. Um, I don't do a lot of shopping. I don't like to shop, uh, although I know people think that I shop a lot. I don't like to shop. I find it really hard to shop um, because it's hard to be out in the public. And, um, and then that's my day. From School starts in September, and it goes all the way through until long school breaks. I try to take vacation. I spend time in Europe with my husband, and that's it. It's, it's kind of real. <laughs> It's real. We're going to do some new songs for you now from my current album. The album is called Take Me Higher. Some of these songs I hope you get a chance to hear soon on CD and record. Okay?
If you're not gonna love me right Baby don't love, baby don't love me <laughs> Dangerous <laughs> The song I'd like to do for you now, please listen to the lyric It's a beautiful word, it's written uh, it speaks a lot about the heart, the words, the voice of the heart. Sit with you here. Sometimes when the world seems so big and real. You will run to the shelter of walls Sometimes you may wish You could be like your shadow It fits wherever it falls Whenever the night's too deep to find And you can't chase the storm The picture you don't want to see Go where it leads From secret to secret You are what you want to be Whenever the night's too deep to find And you can't chase the storm clouds away Singers, please. On the end there, Chucky. 
like to come into the audience. Um, I, I'm not like other performers who kind of look into the darkness like a theater, theater show. Then you look into the darkness and there's a curtain that drops between you and the audience. For me what's really important is that uh, I get a chance to interact with the audience. They are me and I'm them. And I look at their eyes and I want to see their faces and I feel like we've traveled a long ways and I want to be close to them. And uh, the songs, if they love them, there's an identity between, uh, between the two of us. And so I try to um, come into the audience so I'm closer. It, it seems to break the ice. It seems to uh, make us more comfortable with each other. It sort of also makes me more real to them so that I'm not on a pedestal up on a stage away from them and separate from them, that I have the same emotions and the same feelings that they do. And um, it kind of makes us, um, there's a bond that happens when I leave the stage. Sometimes I stay on the stage for a reason because I think they want to really listen to the songs. And sometimes if I go into the audience, and they can't really hear the songs because so much is going on. So I stay on the stage long enough for them to hear the words and hear, feel the melody and feel the um, feelings of the songs. And then when I think it's appropriate, then I come out into the audience to be with them. Um, 
And uh, it's a oneness that happens. Um, I don't want to be separate from the audience. I want to be a part of who they are. And I want to be very involved in their feelings because I have them too about each of the songs. So it's, um, to me, it's just as important for me to go out into the audience as it is for them to have me come into the audience. If I do a whole show and I just stand on the stage, I feel like I've just not, I've not gotten where I should be, where I should, as a performer, I need to be there. And sometimes it's difficult, you know, if they rush the stage or if they rush me, sometimes it's not really easy. And um, in America, they can understand my words very easily. I can say, relax, let me come to you. And they let me walk in the audience. They let me walk around. A lot of the audience here in J Japan may not understand all my words. So they just want to be close to you. So in a sense, it kind of stops me from moving to go around in the audience. Um, but um, because I don't want anybody to ever get hurt. We're going to do a song that's on my current album. And this song, I like to get young people to write songs for me. This is a new song. It's got rap in it. Aha. It's a good rap. And it was written by the Boom Brothers, these beautiful young